wherever you're attending us. This is one of the advantages of doing these online information sessions, obviously. Uh, my name is Bart Basis. I'm the program coordinator of the Master of Information Management. Um, we have an English program, which is obviously called Master of Information Management, and we have a Dutch variant thereof, which is called Master in it Informatie Management. But I will do this presentation, obviously, in English, because I assume that most of the uh, students attending are, um, are English speaking. So I'm the program coordinator. I'm situated in Leuven, in the wonderful city of Leuven, known for various things. Uh, obviously, we have the best university in the world. We also brew the best beer in the world. So Leuven is definitely a very fun city um, to study, if I may say so. Um, I'm located really downtown um, and I'm the program coordinator, so I'm here to um, serve um, the students in case they have any practical questions regarding their programs or if they're doubting what program to study, I'm here to convince them that this is obviously uh, the best program to consider. Um, uh, but I'm also assisted with a study counselor. Uh, so a study counselor um, is a person that will help uh, me to um, answer more practical questions relating to the composition of your study program, um, your study progress or general questions about studying at FEB. Um, what are the goals of the program? This is a Master of Information Management and it's being um, served by the Faculty of Economics and Business. That means that we will not focus on computer science related topics. We will not focus on hardware. We will not focus on operating systems or networks. We will not focus on, on uh, hardcore programming skills. But what we will focus on is on management or a non-technical education in information management. And you will see the term management popping up uh, in various uh, courses, right? So later on, we'll talk about knowledge management and business intelligence as one example of a course, principles of database management, etc. So each of the courses that makes up the program, almost each of them has the word management in there because that's the core focus of our program. We focus on the management of data, on the management of decisions, and on the management of processes. So the focus is on the efficient use and management of information technology applied in a business context. That business context could be finance, could be marketing, could be HR, and could be production and logistics. So anything that is relevant in a business setting. Um, our program has been well designed in line with international frameworks like the AMSYS 2006 and IS 2010 frameworks. Um, in line with those frameworks, we will provide you with new skills, knowledge and insight into five different areas. The managerial aspects of ICT, right? So we will look at uh, managerial aspects at the operational level, at the tactical level, but also at the strategic level of how you can successfully leverage new ICT technologies. And when we say new to ICT technologies, I'm talking about the Internet of Things. I'm talking about wearables. I'm talking about drones, for example. All of that is covered. Insurance providers, for example, nowadays are very carefully looking at how they can use drones to uh, further streamline and optimize their business processes. That's one of the examples that we will also cover. We'll talk about analysis and modeling in a business context. We will also talk about the role of ICT architectures. Just like a building has an architecture, which is designed by an architect, also an ICT system has an architecture, which is being designed by an ICT architect. And actually, as you graduate this program, many of you will end up serving as ICT architects, whereby you're going to work out architectural plans to manage information, process and knowledge for a particular firm in a particular business unit. And finally, throughout the master thesis, we will also make sure that you acquire a professional and scientific information attitude such that you're capable to find information, scientifically relevant information, to back up any decision that you need to make, be it a data management decision, be it a process management decision, or a knowledge management decision. And the program is actually very popular, right? We, uh, I've been program coordinator, I don't know, about 10 or 15 years, and we've seen it growing continuously um, because of the need for information management. I think nowadays we have about, in the English and Dutch program, about 150, 160 students, something like that. Um, and that's because many companies nowadays um, are looking at information management and are being faced with almost an unprecedented continuous flow of data. Think about Google, for example, right? Think about YouTube, all the data that Google and YouTube gather about 
videos, about searches, about advertisements that are being clicked, yes or no. Think about Facebook. Think about companies also like um, like Coca-Cola, for example, or think about banks. If you look at how much data banks are storing nowadays, data about the credit behavior of their customers, about how customers use their credit cards, about uh, the insurance products they prefer, etc. All of this data needs to be stored, needs to be managed, needs to be analyzed, and then needs to be used for making decisions, strategic decisions, like are we going to uh, grant credit to a customer, yes or no? Um, uh, are we going to develop a new type of credit product, yes or no? So all of this application of information technology to study uh, the development of new products, to study how customers behave and how we can manage that from an information perspective is something that we extensively cover throughout the entire program. And one of the key strengths of the program that we consider is that it's very industry driven in the sense that we collaborate with a lot of firms worldwide. I've collaborated myself um, with most of the big banks worldwide, like Bank of America, HSBC, Wells Fargo, also some Asian banks, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and so on. And we have such a wide network of uh, partners that we collaborated with um, that we also try to embed all this knowledge throughout the program, right? So all the professors try to embed their practical knowledge throughout the various courses in the program, the various assignments, but also uh, last but not least, the master project. The master project is a practical piece of research that you will typically conduct in collaboration with a firm, right? So one of the key strengths of our program is that we really consider this program to be very um, application oriented, right? So we really study how information management can contribute to efficient, fast and effective decision making. Let's have a look at the, the setup and the entry requirements for the program. What should be your profile? Well, in order to enter the Master of Information Management, which you see highlighted here and here, you need to have an academic degree in the field of economics or business or an academic degree in a field different from economics or business. Right. Later on, I will say a few more words about the entry requirements, but you can also find that information on our website. And once you've entered the program, you will start uh, with a program of 60 study points. Remember, 60 ECTS or study points. A study point or ECTS represents the workload for a particular course, or if you aggregate it across all the courses, it represents the workload for a particular program. And we have about 24 study points of mandatory courses like business analysis, ICT service management. Remember, I told you that management is going to pop up quite a lot. Architecture and modeling of management information systems. Again, you see the term management, knowledge management and business intelligence. This is a course that I um, co-teach together with a colleague. And there are some mandatory basic courses which uh, account for about 12 ECTS. Principles of database management, again management, this is what I teach. Business information systems, uh, which is uh, also uh, a course in which I am um, that I could teach with a colleague instructor. Then we have the master thesis, which is about 15 ECTS, which is done in close collaboration in, with a firm and in a group of two or three students. And then we have the various types of electives that allow you to tailor the program according to your specific needs and or preferences. And we offer data science electives. I'm a big data science type of guy because I do a lot of research and uh, I'm quite active in the area. We have software engineering electives. We have management electives in case you're more interested in the management aspect. And there's even an internship project where you can do a project together with a firm on a particular um, uh, information management related issue. So you can see that the program is really very oriented towards uh, connecting with industry and seeing how information management can be used as a strate strategic enabler or disruptor, as they sometimes call it in industry. You can see uh, some um, nice pictures of the professors that will guide you through the program. I'm not going to go through all their expertise uh, because I want to spend some time hopefully answering the questions you have as well. We have Professor Snook, who's, who's a specialist in requirements engineering, my colleague and the dean of our faculty, Professor Wilfried Glomayu, who works on databases, Professor Jochen de Weert, who is an ex-PhD of mine and works on business process management and analytics. Here you can see uh, me, I'm working on data science, credit risk and fraud analytics. Professor Johannes uh, de Smet, 
working on business process modeling. Another ex PhD student of mine, Wouter Verbeke, working on data science. And then uh, two um, older professors who are, uh, one of them already retired, but uh, this is Professor Van Tienen, working on business rules and processes, but he's still supervising master theses. And then Professor Ferdipert, who's working on quality of service and network economics. The key strengths of the program we consider to be the interactive feedback driven education. That means nearly every course will have its assignments, right? It will have assignments, either exercise sessions, uh, or just written assignments. And the goal is to take those assignments seriously because those assignments are an excellent tool to provide you with intermediate feedback. We want to have as many of you successfully graduate and have excellent marks because we want to make sure that you assimilate all the knowledge as efficiently as possible. And that's why we are here. We are here to help you assimilate that knowledge. Another key strength of the program is that um, the program is research driven, right? Uh, all of the professors are still very active in their respective fields of uh, research, and we try to embed research findings as much as possible throughout the lectures, right? So you will be uh, also exposed to very recent research in data science for me, for example, or in business process management for some of my colleagues. Um, to further facilitate that, um, uh, we will also invite guest speakers, we will discuss real life case studies, and then obviously there's the master uh, project. Uh, the master project or master thesis is the ultimate opportunity to combine theory, practice, and also uh, showcase your creativity. It's performed in groups of three on a variety of topics. It could be data uh, analytics, process analytics, enterprise modeling, data quality. Um, it could be Internet of Things. It could be studying very new developments like wearables or drones and see what you can do with that from an information management perspective. It's always supervised by a professor, a person like me, and a daily supervisor who is a PhD student. Um, I'm not going to give you further information about the practical setup of the master thesis because that will become clear as you um, move along throughout the program. But do note that it's done in groups, groups of three, and it's a practical case study, right? And it's supposed to be the cherry on the cake of your uh, education program of your master of information management. What do we expect uh, from our students? We expect them to show motivation and work hard, right? Because as lecturers, what we will do is we will go really go the extra mile to support you as good as possible uh, to make sure that uh, the learning uh, experience for you um, is really streamlined and optimized by uh, guiding you through the, um, through, the, through the course as good as possible, making sure that every time you have questions, you have enough opportunities to ask them either in the lecture or on discussion forums online or um, helping you out with assignments, etc. So just to give you an idea, um, one study point for should correspond to more or less 25 or 30 hours of work, right? And one hour of lecture should correspond more or less to three hours of student work, right? Um, here you can see a further split up of that. It depends upon whether the course involves assignments or no assignments and so on. So we would really ask you to attend the lectures, pay attention, keep up with the material. What you can expect from us is that we will um, highly invest in high quality lecturing, especially also in these COVID times. We pay a lot of attention to online lecturing, to streaming facilities and so on. We are always there for our students to ask them uh, to, 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 to guide them through the, through the program. So we'll answer your questions. We will also provide you feedback after the assignments and our exercise sessions. What are the profiles that you can aim for? Well, there's various profiles that you can aim for after you graduated. Um, most of you will go to industry. A few of you will maybe study further, do another master or even take a PhD program. Um, I've, I've hired a few management of information management graduates before as PhD students, but the job profiles typically aim for are business process analyst, uh, database analyst, data scientist is also highly aimed for, uh, ERP specialist, IT architect. Remember an IT architect essentially designs the architectural plan of an information system from a data perspective, from a process perspective, and from a decision perspective, project managers, and so on. And we've really seen throughout the couple of years, we've seen our information management graduates grow up in the hierarchy of decision making in firms. We even uh, saw some of them reaching uh, the C-level profile 
um, of, um, of, uh, of decision making within particular firms. So it offers a really wide education uh, with lots of opportunities for, um, uh, for growing your career. So here you can see some of the admission requirements for students with a diploma obtained at a non-Flemish institution. So we ask you um, to obtain an, uh, to have an academic bachelor or master degree. Uh, for some students, we will ask an English language proficiency certificate. Obviously, if you have a master from an English speaking university from the UK, from Australia, from the US and so on, you will be exempted from this. But otherwise, we'll ask you to do a TOEFL or an ILTS or a Cambridge um, English uh, advanced uh, test or, 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 or a proficiency test, as you see right here, CAE or CP. Uh, depending upon your origin, uh, what, what's your background? I mean, what's your ed educational background? What's your academic background? We may also require a GMAT or GRE score. Do note that when we ask a GMAT or GRE score that we don't do this to annoy you, right? We really do this to help you out because we want to make sure that you choose a program which is really tailored to your needs and your capacity, right? Because we want to be sure that if you enroll in the program that you have maximal chance of successfully graduating, right? There's no professor in the world that I know that likes to fail students. We all like to educate students um, in the most optimal way and make sure that they have the highest marks that are um, that are possible, right? And that's that's why we we ask these additional requirements. If we have doubts that the program could be too much of a challenge for you, um, uh, a GMAT or GRE score can um, reassure us that this is not the case. Um, we also have uh, Facebook groups um, you know, that we um, maintain to stay in close contact with our students and post all kinds of events that we're doing. There's a public Facebook group which everybody can read and there, there's the uh, rumor and gossip Facebook group, right? That uh, There's a private uh, student group that students can use to do some rumors and gossip about uh, their professors or uh, or uh, anything, um, anything related about the program which are um, uh, not supposed to be seen by a by a wider community. OK, here you can see some uh, of our student ambassadors. I'm not going to read the quotes, but I can tell you that the graduates that we have um, delivered in the past few years, um, I can tell you that uh, on an overall basis, people are very satisfied. They very easily find a job afterwards, either in industry, either in academia, in case they want to continue their studies. And yeah, I can uh, I, I think from um, that we can really maybe brag a little bit about this, that our graduates are usually very, very, very satisfied about what they've learned throughout this one year Master of Information Management at KU Leuven. If you want more uh, practical information, here you can find um, uh, information about student platforms, student websites, information about the alumni and student ambassadors. Uh, there's uh, an information package available and so on. And in case you have any remaining questions, you can ask them now or you can always send me uh, or um, our faculty at admissions.fab an email uh, with your question.